and welcome to the Morning Star series, Why Should I Invest With You? I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Richard Pease, manager of the Crux European Special Situations Fund. Hi, Richard. Hello. So Europe has fallen off the radar a little bit because Brexit in the UK and the US elections across the pond have taken their headlines, but there is a lot going on across the continent. One of the things that we are concerned about is this sort of contagion with the movement in the US and the UK, this anti-politics politics. Should we be concerned about the continent? Well, I think, I think one has to be a bit concerned um, that Brexit might be the first of the dominoes. Um, and, and certainly as far as the US elections, I think, I think the market's concern is that if Trump should get in, that he'll be very protectionist. Um, I, I like to think that obviously he has been successful from a business point of view. And hopefully he won't do some of the things that he's promised if he actually gets in. I, I hope he's not that stupid. Um, so I, 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 I guess that it, it does concern the market, but hopefully the worst won't come to pass. Um, from our point of view, as always, we try and focus on individual stocks rather than crystal ball gaze the macro. And that does tend to add value. And it does, does tend to protect us in terms of our, our sort of longer term um, outlook. I suppose the macro, though, does create opportunities for you to add to positions that you do like. Markets across the board in Europe are down 2% today, perhaps because of the concerns across the pond with Hillary Clinton's health and the likelihood of Trump getting into the White House. You say you don't make decisions based on the macro, but presumably when there is a, a bit of volatility, you can add to those positions you feel strong about. Yes, we do. I mean, I, I think that's exactly way to, 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 to put it. I, mean, I think if you, if you kind of follow stocks very closely, you are sufficiently confident to buy when the market's nervous, and that definitely helps. I suppose one of the other things that is a potential headwind for the European stock market is this Italian banking crisis. You know, those stocks in themselves fell, but also the contagion risk across financials and, and indeed across other equities. It has had some effect, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I, mean, I, I think if, if, if you look at it very simplistically, um, the southern European economy has benefited the most um, with, with, with the European Union and low rates. And I guess if you reverse that, they suffer the most. Um, and obviously banks are the ultimate leverage play on, on that. We aren't actually in southern Europe particularly at all, and we're certainly not in southern European banks. Um, but certainly I think the market is probably quite right to be a bit concerned about that. You do have some exposure to financials, though, don't you? Yes, we do. It, it's much more Scandinavian-based. We have three Scandinavian banks. Um, I mean, that's a slightly special situation story where we, we feel the dividends are very um, likely to be paid. There's decent yields and decent management. So it, it's, it's not a sort of global story. And where are you seeing the best investment opportunities then? Is it very much a case by case because of the special situations nature of the fund? Or are there particular pockets because of the, the place in the cycle that we're at that you're seeing sort of thematic opportunities? Well, I, I guess what we tend to do is we look at stock by stock approach. But, but that very often ends up with us having a bit of a thematic um, idea or two. And one of the ideas would be, I, I still think, outsourcing. Um, we've got quite a lot in caterers and um, that kind of thing. Um, the, the, the attraction of that sector is that, um, interestingly, when the economy is trickier, um, people are encouraged to outsource because it saves money. So, so you can see um, it's, it's, it's sort of easier to get business. And there's lots of sort of self-help self you can do. And I think the other attraction with that kind of business model is that uh, you have a lot of recurring revenue. And certainty is obviously very much appreciated in uncertain times and you have negative working capital. And, and, and I think that the very fact that these sorts of companies, in, in, in quite a few cases, have been through private equity and been very leveraged, and now they're, they're, they're public and, and, and in most cases very deleveraged, tells you that the business quality is actually very much there, otherwise they couldn't have got the leverage. So, so, so we, we do like some names there. And over the last 12 months, you've managed a 25% return to investors, which is pretty good, uh, especially compared to some peers. But the way that you were positioned over the last year, do you expect that to continue to deliver you know, double-digit returns over the last year? Or was that a next year? Or was that a sort of a unique 12 months? Well, I mean, I, I, I would be foolish to try and make a promise. But, but I, I think, I mean, our, our approach has been pretty long term. And so we don't tend to change the portfolio enormously. We've certainly made some changes. Um, and we've taken a few profits. But, but essentially, the portfolio is pretty similar um, in, in terms of its actual sort of principles. And, a lot of the same names are there. Um, I, I think quite a lot of that 25%, you know, being frank about it, is Sterling's weakness. 
Um, I mean, I guess sterling's recovered a bit, but it's probably 13, 14% down against the euro. So we've had a big um, helping hand just in terms of currency there. I mean, I, 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 would, I would hate to make silly promises about expected returns, but I, I think that if, if people can mentally turn off that screen and actually invest rather than just speculate, um, I, I think certainly history will be on their side. I mean, I, I think certainly if you, if you, if you look at our strategies, it's, it, it's been fairly consistent in terms of delivering over the three to five year period. I, I would hate to make a short term promise there. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.